So guys, well, thanks so much for doing this. Could you start by telling us a bit about the normal mechanism of aqueous fluid production in the eye and how it's normally done? Okay. Aqueous humor is produced by the ciliary process of the ciliary body okay. and then percolates from the ciliary body um, through the pupil, okay. uh, over the surface of the lens, through the pupil and then into the anterior chamber. So very roughly with okay. some terrible drawing, if you've got the iris here, mm -hmm. you've got a ciliary body sitting just tucked in underneath there. Here's your cornea at mm -hmm. the front and there's the outside world. Pupils here and you've got a lens sitting just behind there with zonules to the ciliary body, which is the other function of the ciliary body. So you produce aqueous from, by active secretion. It percolates over the surface of the lens through the pupil there into the anterior chamber and bathes the surface of the anterior chamber. It will then drain, this is obviously in cross section, yeah. into the angle here and the trabecular meshwork is sitting just in this recess. Okay. If you're looking from the front and you've got the pupil there, you've got a 360 degree ring of tissue into which the aqueous fluids coming through the pupil and then draining out of the eye. Yeah, okay. You. So in acute glaucoma, what sort of goes wrong with this process? Uh, acute glaucoma is more accurately acute angle closure okay. glaucoma or acute angle closure uh, because what happens in this process is that the insusceptible individuals, the lens is sighted slightly more anteriorly relative to the, uh, the pupil plane and that means that there's a relative blockage of fluid flow between the iris mm -hmm. and the lens and because there's a relative blockage there you build up a pressure differential across the iris structure and that pressure differential analogous to a, uh, a sail causes a pressure to push the iris forwards so you get iris bombay and that's when you get an iris that sits forwards like that in front of the position that it would normally occupy mm -hmm. and there's a, there's, a, there's a pocket of aqueous humor sitting behind there pushing it forwards like a sail. That means that this then iris then gets pushed up into this angle. This angle here narrows and what you eventually end up with is this iris in contact with the trabecular meshwork obstructing the access of the aqueous in the anterior chamber into that drainage angle. Right. So you get angle closure there. Mm -hmm. In acute angle closure, yeah. you end up with a vicious circle or a vicious cycle where uh, the, the iris swells slightly, the pressure differential continues to push that forwards, mm -hmm. but aqueous continues to be made, and obviously the pressure inside the eye rises very rapidly. Sometimes those episodes are broken spontaneously. Patients okay. come in and they've had headaches for months or years, yep. they've had episodes of very high raised pressure for years, but every time it happens, it settles down or it resolves. Okay. In acute angle closure, that doesn't resolve and it ends up in a situation where it can't resolve itself and you need to treat it. Okay, so you mentioned headache, um, how else would these patients present? How would you spot acute uh, Ocular, periocular pain, mm -hmm. generalised headache. A lot of these patients sometimes once they've had preventative treatment to stop this happening again mm -hmm. come in and say my migraines have disappeared. In fact they've been having some sort of pressure related pain for sometimes years. Okay. You often get a sore, red, painful eye. Mm -hmm. Once the eye pressure becomes very high, the eye itself will become um, red, the conjunctiva becomes injected, the vessel, conjunctival vessels dilate, mm -hmm. so you end up with a red eye. Uh, the vision will often become blurry because the cornea, at very high pressure, the cornea will become edematous. So the, the corneal endothelial pump fails to um, adequately pump the fluid out of the cornea to keep its clarity when there's a very high hydrostatic pressure gradient and then therefore the cornea um, becomes swollen and then becomes cloudy and you can't see clearly. Characteristically that also presents with um, symptoms of or traditionally described as halos around bright light sources yeah. and dim rooms so people see um, uh, a variety of different descriptions but uh, little rainbow star patterns around lights sometimes they've got the, the, uh, a full halo around a bright light that's caused by scattering of the light where the corneal um, collagen fibers and frib fibrils are spaced inappropriately by the increasing swelling within corneal edema. 
but you also have quite profound systemic symptoms. So some people feel very nauseous, feel very sick. Some people end up vomiting because they have a sort of a, effectively a sort of vague or stimulation. Uh, there are plenty of instances of people being admitted to general surgical wards with um, repeat vomiting, even mannery vice tears hematemesis as a result of their vomiting, yeah. and they go through a whole assessment for that when in fact it was a precipitating cause um, was actually their acute angle closure. Fine, okay. So um, a doctor in a &E or a doctor on surgical take, what would be the signs that they need to try and pick up um, on examination? Predominant, to stop a, a sore red painful eye, productionally red. with, productionally, uh, particularly with a reduction in vision. Yep. Um, if they've got eye signs, eye symptoms, if, if one eye is m uh, much more clearly red than the other, yep. um, and if they describe a, an acute recent sudden reduction in visual acuity. Okay, and it's always unilateral? No, it's rare, rarely, rarely it's bilateral. Um, we had an, uh, a case series in a case control study that I did of acute angle closure in Singapore of 115 cases of which slightly over 10% were bilateral. But bilateral cases are more common in the East Asians. Right, okay, fine. Sorry, you've got me on my MD subject. Yeah, no, good. Pet subject. And um, so what are the main risks of acute glaucoma? What are the sort of end points that we're worried about? The risk factors for developing the disease are uh, female gender, increasing age, and um, particularly Far East Asian descent. Are they, those, those are the individuals who are particularly prone to the disease, but it does happen and can happen in anyone. The consequences of untreated acute angle closure are ischemic damage to the vulnerable structures within the eye. And the most vulnerable structure is the iris. So you get ischemic iris damage, okay. get a fixed dilated pupil as a result. Mm -hmm. But ultimately you can get pressure related nerve damage. So you can end up with, uh, within a matter of uh, a day or two, start developing permanent irreversible pressure related optic neuropathy. So irreversible glaucoma does optic neuropathy. Yeah. Fine. And finally, um, how do we manage these patients? What do we do in acute glaucoma? The first, the first um, thing to do is to try and reduce the intraocular pressure. Um, you can do that with aqueous suppressants. Uh, cetazolamide or diamox is a very effective aqueous suppressant okay. where they're given. Normally, these patients can't take it orally because they're if severe cases. They're vomiting, mm -hmm. um, so we give it intravenously, and that that. Uh, that uh, acts more quickly, mm -hmm. often with then some follow-up of oral diamox as well, so there's a sort of slow release component. Yeah. Uh, very high intraocular pressures, uh, pupil constricting pilocarpin doesn't work because the iris is ischemic so it can't constrict, right. but once the pressure comes down, the pilocarpin that you give to treat it will begin to act and begin to bring the pupil down. And a, and a constricting, um, reduced pupil size tends to reduce the tendency for this Re obstruction to uh, fluid flow mm -hmm. causing that pressure differential that I was talking about that was causing that iris bombay. So you've got the lens here. Mm -hmm. it, this tends to happen when the pupil is mid dilated. Uh -huh. If we constrict the pupil so the pupil plane flattens out then it, this tends to allow the fluid flow mm -hmm. um, back again. So the mainstays are aqueous humor production mm -hmm. suppression with uh, diamox a topical timolol, beta blockers if they're able to take that, mm -hmm. um, sometimes other intraocular pressure lowering topical drugs. Pilocarpin to uh, constrict the pupil to try to break the actual pupil block element. Mm -hmm. And then the definitive treatment is to make a hole in the iris, which is the iridotomy, with a laser from outside that equalizes the pressure flow, sorry, the pressure gradient across the iris mm -hmm. and allows fluid flow through that hole so that there's, you've bypassed the pupil block which is the sort of the underlying cause. Also uh, definitive treatment is, is, is lens extraction and cataract extraction. Lens extraction in the hot inflamed eye has it carries its own risk to the corneal endothelium, it's more difficult surgery. Um, so is generally left until some weeks or months later. We did do a randomised control trial of a, I did a randomised control trial of early lens extraction, uh, which showed better results, but there were significant risks. Right, okay. Thank you so much. So we like to finish it just by saying, say I was an F2 doctor in a &E mm -hmm. or a GP trainee, yep. or indeed a final year med student, what would you say are like the four take home points about acute glaucoma that we mustn't forget? 
Uh, always consider it as a differential diagnosis of intermittent severe headache, particularly periocular or uniocular eye pain. Mm -hmm. To take a history that asks about visual symptoms in association with uh, blurring of vision, sorry, with, with intermittent blurring of vision in association with uh, headache and redness of the eye, yep. particularly episodic, uh, classically occurring conditions of low light levels. Okay. Uh, look for people who've got long sighted hypermetropic glasses, is a, is a, is a characteristic point. Mm -hmm. um, and I've only come up with three. I have to think about the fourth. That's good. Three is one less to okay. remember. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gardner.